The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What's up and welcome to Storyline here. I'm Nick Eatman. It is Thursday, August the 1st, new month. Let's see what happens here for the Cowboys as we begin another week of training camp, another show of training camp as the Cowboys are looking to get these uh, padded practices underway before the first preseason game, which is next weekend. I got a, I wouldn't say a scrimmage, it's just a blue-white practice. It'll be televised. Um, and it will be streamed on the website as well, so you'll be able to watch uh, practice on Saturday. Uh, there'll be another padded practice there, and then, of course, the Cowboys, uh, a week from this Sunday, will have their first game. I believe that's August the 11th. All right, we've got callers on the line. We've got news to talk about. The Cowboys will have a couple of workouts today, uh, trying to add some pass rushers here with Sam Williams' injury. Um, they've got guys on the team that, that will get extra reps, but I think they can tell it's, it's, it's going to need some, some outside help here. The Cowboys are looking at uh, four players today. One of them is Carl Lawson. He's got 27 sacks in his career. Uh, he's got some ties to this coaching staff. Paul Gunther is the uh, uh, run game coordinator for the, for the Cowboys in working with Zimmer. He was the defensive coordinator in Cincinnati when uh, Lawson had eight and a half sacks as a rookie. That was back in 2017. So he, that's a guy that, that they're going to look at. He's, he's available. He's played a couple of years with the Jets, had some injury issues, but uh, a guy that definitely knows how to rush the passer. Uh, uh, Shaka Tony is another player who's been in Washington. He's, he's uh, got also ties to the staff. Uh, al Kadeen Muhammad and Justin Holland, those four players will be working out with the team uh, today, uh, most of them. Uh, got some pretty good, you know, veteran experience in, in around that 10 to 12 career sacks. Um, obviously, Lawson has the 27, so he's a guy that we're certainly looking at here. All right, we'll go to the callers here. Let's get started here. Sebastian is in Savannah, Georgia. Sebastian. Good day, good day, Mr. Eman. How are you doing? It's been a minute. Yeah, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Happy New Year's to the uh, Story Life fam and of course, happy belated birthday to Dr. Sunshine. I wasn't able to get through that day. But uh, I've been listening to a lot of the callers, Mr. Eatman, and, and it just sounds like they're souring on the messenger, the messengers being Steven and, and Jerry a little bit. But honestly, it's the same thing every team has to do every year. You have to sell hope before the season opens. You can't go into a season believing you don't stand a chance. You know, but... When you take an objective look, I'm like, we got the kind of team that can go 12-5 and five or 5-12. Five and 12. I don't know. Personally, I'm just hoping that we have a good season. You know, we're competitive. Oh, uh, why why would they, camp big. Why go, would they go 5-12? and 12? Like, why? Why? Because they lost I'm the saying, I'm saying, I'm saying if, the, if the floor fell from underneath us, like, you know, injuries yeah. or whatever the case happened. And, yeah, well, uh, that's we everything. Could, sure. up for that. I, don't, I don't believe we have great, great depth. You know, so I think a couple of injuries could really set us back. Yeah, and that's and that's the case with with a lot of teams. And 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 you know, I don't think you, we know what kind of depth we we really have with this team yet. I mean, it's that's what that's why you go to training camp. I mean, there's there's going to be players that emerge and develop. I just think it's it's kind of early, and and I hear it too. I mean, a lot of the callers they're they're down. I guess it's because of the 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 players that left in free agency. If that's the case, then Washington's going to win the Super Bowl, apparently, if you lose that oh, many no. great no, players. Not. <laughs> no way. can't win without no, like, Fowler. What's up? All right, what do you like got? I was saying, I don't, yeah, like I was saying, I don't know, but I, I do know a couple of things. One, Tyler Guyton has to win that starting a starting position somewhere. We can't have to just back-to-back season where our first-round draft pick doesn't do much of anything. Right. And then, two, uh, my favorite battle that I'm looking forward to during training camp is the running backs because, honestly, Ezekiel Elliott's a great veteran option. He's not starting caliber to me anymore. And I want to see who's going to step up in that running back room and really set themselves apart as a potential starting caliber running back. I also want to know, Deuce, are you just a heartwarming story or are you a 
good football player who's going to help us help out this team this year. So a lot of people have to take a step forward through this training camp, and I'm really looking and excited to see what the battles play out. You know, but Tyler Guyton has to win a starting spot. I'm sorry, that's just how I feel. Yeah, and have a great day. Bro. Thanks, Sebastian. He's starting right now. He's getting those reps. He's doing nothing that you would say would would lose those reps. Um, he's got Micah Parsons a little frustrated, uh, and that's the thing. Just because. That's why they drafted him. He's got the length, you know. He's got he's got quick feet, and he's got length. He can he can keep you off of him. Think of it like I was talking with Nate Newton yesterday. We were talking about that about short arms, long arms. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think Cooper Beebe was dra- drafted in the third round as opposed to higher rounds, just because of the arm length and all that. Um, you got to have good strength to kind of overcome that. But if you if you've got that length, I mean, that's great for boxers, obviously, to have that, keep keep people off of them. Same with, with um, you know, left tackles or tackles in general. You just got to have that, and he's doing that, and, he's, and he combines that with his quick feet, and, and that'll help him. I mean, I'm not to say he's, he's not going to have problems in Cleveland week one. You know, with Miles Garrett, everybody does, but um, I think that's what's kind of helping him in this learning curve is that he is such a great athlete, and so... That's, you know, he's going to have his problems. There's no doubt about it. We'll see what happens when the, the, the pads are on, but no one's really, really, you know, it's still not 100% full go. So let's see what happens when that does uh, occur. But but uh, so far, so good on him. And you're right, he's got to be, he, I mean, not only does your first-round pick have to do something, but last year's first-round pick has to do something. Um, and, of course, in Mozzie Smith. And so every first-round pick has to do something or, or you're going to be in trouble that's why teams have to go and get free agency all the time and when people ask the question well why do these other teams go and and, and sign these guys in free agency it's because they're not drafting as well and they've got more busts on the first round second round third round they've got more holes to fill the cowboys are doing most of that within so they have they've been drafting well um but Either, either way, I mean, it's, it's. Um, I think you're right. I think he's going to do. Uh, Tyler Guyton is going to be your left tackle. As for running back, I don't know. Um, I still, there's a part of me that thinks that the, the the guy that leads the team and carries this season is not here right now. That I, I still think that's possible. Um, a guy, they'll have to bring somebody in. Uh, I just don't know. If you don't think Zeke's a starting caliber back, and that's fair. I don't know if anyone is on the team. You know, they just don't have anybody on the team that's done it. Um, you know, Morris Freeman's done it some, but I, I still think that's a that's a position that you can go and fill from the outside. All right, let's go, Jeff, in Salt Lake City. Good morning, Jeff. How you doing? Can't Question for you. you. Um, kind of. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. You can hear me now? Okay. I got a question for you, kind of to follow up. Um, I didn't get to hear what Sebastian was saying, but you were kind of talking about what I wanted to ask you. Um, in regards to the offensive line, watching the videos of practice two days ago with Tyler Guyton and Micah, it was uh, it was really encouraging just because people have said he's pretty raw, but he's got all the athletic traits. Why does this coaching staff continue to throw Chuma Adoga out there with the first team during practice? Um, Philbin did it two years ago with Tyler Smith. He was sitting behind McGovern, and now we're seeing Chuma out there with the first team. I'm with you. Give the first-round pick all the reps that he can get. Throw him in the fire. Let him learn. I don't understand why they keep throwing Chuma out there. I was listening to Will McClay on 105.3 The Fan, and he said that um, that uh, Guyton needs to earn it. Well, what exactly is Chuma uh, Doga earned? He got taken out of the Miami game last year because he was blowing assignments, and he's a veteran. So I would rather go with the rookie. If he's going to make mistakes, let him learn than a veteran who's going to make mistakes. What's your thoughts on that? I, I think, I, think I know what your thoughts are, but. Yeah, well, I, I, I'll say this, though. I mean, I, it, Chuma Doga's on the team right now. I mean, he's, he's, he's a guy that can play tackle, guard, um, he can play both both tackle spots, um, so I, I, I'm with you 1,000 percent that you're, that Tyler Guy needs to be the starter. He needs to be the starter. He needs to go up against the best pass rushers. Uh, he needs to face Micah. He needs to face Tank. He needs to, to, to get those reps when it's one on one, when it's team drill and all that. So that's what I believe. I 
do I think Chuma doesn't need to be out there? No, I, I mean, he, he needs to be out there too. And if that's how they're doing it, that's how they're rotating it. Um, because he's going to need some, he needs reps too. Well, these guys get hurt, and and if he's if he's the guy, if he's next in line, then then he needs his reps. But I, I, yeah, I think I think to, to answer your question, I think Tyler Guyton earned it when they drafted him first round. That's when you right. draft a guy first round, he's got to play. So throw him in there. So that's what right. I believe. I think you is agree. It, yeah. Does, well, does, does it seem like this coaching staff with Mike McCarthy, they they seem like they're hesitant to play the rookies? It seems like. Under Jason Garrett's administration, they would always throw the first-round pick out there. But it just seems like uh, with this administration, I know we had CD and he was the third and all that kind of stuff. It's been four years. But I, I just I get that feeling sometimes they're hesitant to play the young guys. Yeah, a, a little. You know, it, it, they're probably hesitant just because of what – that player is showing them in, in, in the meetings and, and also on the field. I mean, they were not hesitant to play Micah Parsons. You know, I mean, he, right. he played. And so it, it, it's it's also what the guy is, is probably showing. Um, but it's it's a sink or swim type thing, and he's going to have to swim. And Tyler Guyton, and they know that. And it's, it's this isn't anything to really worry about. It, it was one day, two days. But Guyton's been out there now. He's gonna take him, and he's gonna take these reps because that's 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 what he should do. So he will. Awesome. All right. I got one more question okay, for go you, ahead, Nick. Jeff. If that's okay. Yep. I uh, just wanted to ask you. Um, I've been reading like uh, some conflicting reports here. Your guys' own Patrick Walker has been uh, saying that uh, Mossy's been doing well out there, but get conflicting reports from others that are out there on site. What's your opinion? How's Mossy looked? Um, is he upbeat? Is he does he look like he's Excited to be out there. What's your thoughts no. on that? And I'll hang up and listen. No, Thank well, you. Well, yeah, to answer the question, does he look excited to be out here? No, but that's not Mozzie. <laughs> he doesn't ever look excited to be out here. I mean, that's it, that's nothing against him. That's just his kind of his M.O., really. I think the conflicting reports is the fact that you're talking about a defensive tackle where they're not tackling. It's pads, but it's – Everybody's 100% is is the same. Everyone's 75% is a little different. So when you're when you're talking about, you know, live pads, but you're not bringing people to the ground, and and so it's therefore it, it, it is a little bit different different to see who's winning this drill, who's not. Now when they go one on one, that's pretty easy to see. And so yeah, there are some things that Mozzie's doing well, but. You're also some conflicting reports. It's, it's who's who's saying it, and again, I'm not I'm not an expert when it comes to defensive tackles, and most people aren't. And so, when you see players that aren't going and getting sacks, well, then he's not playing well. So you'll hear that. The job for Mozzie Smith is to get a double team. That's his job. Get the guard in the center to block me. If he's doing that, that's the job. And so that's why first-round defensive tackles, you know, that's why it's not a sexy pick because his job is not to be Aaron Donald. That's great if you can do that, but most players don't. What he needs to do is to be strong enough to be in the middle where he can get doubled. If he can get doubled, you know Mike is going to get doubled. Now everybody else should be able to do in their job. But if one guy, one guard, one center is blocking him, that's not doing a great job. So my point is, is that it's hard to really evaluate the tackles from a practice like this. So there's going to be plays where, yeah, he's doing his job. There's going to be some where maybe he isn't. Um, and so that's we'll see what happens really when, when the games happen, the pads come on, that kind of stuff. All right, let's go to Lewis in Langston, Oklahoma. What's going on? How are you doing this morning? Good. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Like I told Chris, trying to beat this heat, we're looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds for the rest of the week. Sorry. So, I mean, try, I'm trying not to try, trying to trying to stay hydrated. I got long sleeves on. It's a little chilly. I know you don't want to hear that. Sorry, everybody's got their own issues. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Lewis? How you doing? No, no, much, man. Uh, I was just calling because I was, I, I, I was, I was thinking, looking at this. Uh, the Cowboys are bringing in the Carl Lawson for a workout and everything and I understand it with losing Sam uh Sam Williams and I was wondering did you think it was a good idea to try to get him in early or wait you know a preseason game or two to see kind of what you have with the rookies and the people that's been there for a couple of years 
or was it you, you know that or is this kind of Zimmer saying, hey, listen, I don't mind what I have, but we can you know add some more depth here right now and not even have to worry about trying to contend with everybody else. Yeah, I think I think that's that's always the issue. Um, with and I'll answer that. Do you have another question? Oh no, no, go ahead. I, I, I'll take it off there. All right, appreciate Lewis. It. Appreciate that. Stay cool over there in Langston, Oklahoma, uh, the best that you can. That that's always the dilemma. Do you want to see what you've got with these young players? Do you also want to? get ahead of the game and just sign them and, and not have to wait for another team to have the same type of injury. And then they sign them. They throw money at them. Um, to me, I I would bring the guy in. And if you like what you see out of one of these four, I would sign him. Um, because if you if you still think the Tyrus Wheats of the world, Darrell Johnson, uh, Marsh, Marshawn Nealon, um, if those guys are still there, if you still like them, they're going to get reps. Um, it's not like these guys are going to come off the street from the couch and come right in and start rushing the passer. I mean, they're going to need to ramp themselves up too. So I think you can do both. Both things can happen. You can sign player or two if you need to. They can work them their, their way into the system, back into the football conditioning again. At the same time, these other guys are getting reps and snaps. And, um, you know, the, the, those guys are, are out there for a reason. You know, they're out there for a reason. They're also brought in for a reason. So that's what this is. It's a look-see. Do you still have some stuff left in the tank? All right, we are going to have to go to break here. We're going to go to a quick break. Uh, we'll be right back here on Cowboy Storyline. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. If you can't be at the stadium, there's no better way to watch your Cowboys than on an LG OLED Evo TV. That's because everything you see is more lifelike. Every play, every hit. I mean, you might as well be on the sidelines. That's how clear it is. It's all thanks to LG's legendary technology. Perfect black, over 8.3 million self-lit pixels. No one comes close. LG OLED Evo is the best TV in the game for a reason. See for yourself at LG.com slash OLED Evo. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change, a proud partner of the Cowboys, is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. Back, back, back. The Cowboys Storylines. Hey, Cowboys Nation, 2024 training camp is here, presented by American Airlines. Come out and watch practice through August 21st. Admission is free. Go to dallascowboys.com slash training camp for schedules and details. All right, let's go back to the phone lines here. Let's go to a place where it all started uh, for me, Wichita Falls, Texas. We got Chris in Wichita Falls. What is up? I know the weather's not like this. I can promise you that. Yeah, Nick, it's insanely hot. I'd rather be uh, there in Oxnard with you for the temps wise, at least. Yeah. Man, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. What's going on in Wichita Falls? My wife's actually in Wichita <laughs> Falls right now. My family's there, so it's hot. Oh, I, I know, know that. I know, man. I know. Uh, no, no, not much. I just wanted to chime in on a little bit of a different subject. I know everybody's worried about a lot of things and contracts, and that's the same answers you get all the time, questions. Mm -hmm. But let's shift gears just a little bit and uh, want to talk to you about special teams. You know, a lot of different rules and changes this season. Of course, we see the new uh, kickoff rules and the uh, onside rules and things like that. But I wanted to ask you, do you think John Fossil, how, how can he trick this up? How can he sneak something in? And then the second part to that question is, basically, now that special teams is limited, how does this affect those fringe players who are looking for a chance to make this team when the, the options now, the, the chances, are, are so limited? What do you mean by that, so limited by special teams? Well, I guess just the, the, 
you know, the traditional kickoff we've seen, you know, it's kind of spread, a lot of speed, a lot of chances, I guess chances, as we say, for a player to go out and make a big play, whether it's a, whether it's a gunner, whether it's a kickoff returner, somebody like that. It just seems like they had more of a chance to maybe make an impact play, whereas now, you know, it's kind of been re- – they're reducing it for safety reasons. But I just wonder if that, that plays into, uh, into well, some of that. Chris, I kind of disagree with you there because I, I think yeah. that this year I think you've got more opportunities on special teams because before the kickoff was just going through the end zone. I mean, you weren't even having that. Now they, they want to put that play back in the game. They just want to make it safer. Um, so unless I'm not seeing this the same way, I, I just I think of it as a little bit more opportunities. I know C.J. Goodwin is, is excited – as, as ever, as a special teams guy, he just feels like there's more opportunities to go make plays. Now, it might be a different type of player, um, and that goes to your first question of how John Fossil is going to trick it up, if you will. Um, and I think he's I, he's like he walks around. He's always got a great attitude. But, I mean, when you see him this whole offseason, it, it, it's like a kid at Christmas morning. I mean, like every every day, he he's just got the wheels are spinning up here. Um, I don't think we really know just yet how these plays are going to go. What what the type of kickoff you're going to see? Are you going to see the pooch kicks? Are you going to see the line drive kicks? Are you going to see dribbler kicks that try to dribble the ball out of the end zone, which actually would be the best thing you could do? This is going to be different types of kicks, different type of strategy, different type of players that they throw in there. Speed guys, big guys. I, I, that's why I think preseason this year is going to be as enjoyable to watch as others, just to see rules like that. Oh, I like it. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, I'll leave you with one last thing. Yeah. You can give me your favorite Dexter Coakley story, and I'll <laughs> hang up and listen. All right. Uh, Thanks, thank, boss. Appreciate it. Dexter Coakley. Man, I I love Dexter Coakley. Uh, he was he was an awesome player, I thought. Um Nothing comes to mind really quick except for the fact that he and Dat Wynn were absolutely not passing the eye test for Bill Parcells. Like, it just, no, this is not the linebacker that I need. These aren't the type of guys. These are safeties for me. I need big linebackers like I had with Harry Carson and Carl Banks and, you know, Pepper Johnson and LT and, and they're like, and even Zimmer. Like, just get these, just let these guys go play. You'll see. And then. Six weeks later, a six, a three months later, oh, Coakley, that win. These are you don't even have to worry about them. They're 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 outstanding, you know. And it's just it's just the fact that just football players come in all you know shapes and sizes. And and Coakley was great. And on, another th- story too is when you make big plays, make sure people are watching. Dexter Coakley interception against Dan Marino in the '99 Thanksgiving Day game for a touchdown. Had another one, makes the Pro Bowl. You know, when the Pro Bowl voting's going on, they remember plays like that in big games. And so that's one thing I always remember about Coakley. I, I, I really liked him. He was one of my favorites. All right, uh, Travis in San Antonio is next. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Good. It sounds like the early part of the show, the, uh, they turned off the mower for you. So no, no. That's, that's a, I don't that's think a they did. That's a win right honestly. there. <laughs> I don't think they turned it no. off. They're just moving moving away from us. But just wait till the leaf blower oh, okay. comes and all that. Well, well, just so you know, it sounds better. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was just going to say, I don't know. I I missed his name, um, but there was a caller a couple of calls ago. And by the way, I love Dexter Coakley, too. He was one of my my favorite players. He was awesome. um, Growing up. So uh, shout out to Dexter Coakley. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to, some of the conflicting reports, because, again, I've been on a couple of other uh, chats online. You know, I'm 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 making myself the president of the Mozzie fan club. And um, (laughs) some of the reports. I guess the conflicting ones are he's had some good reps. His get-off looks better, which is a plus, um, and then his weight is up. We still never got an answer uh, last year why you know why he got down to 290, which was uh, even confusing for me. But he was never like a 330 player uh, pound player. You know, he he said it, uh, himself he wanted to be like 315 to 325, yeah. which sounds like he's that right around about 315 right. Yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so some of the conflicting reports, I guess, were that his get up was better and he looks better overall. But um, from what I've heard from some people that are like boots on the ground there, um, Scanina has been working with him um, just for one on ones. He was doing really good. Um, but some of the uh, like the double teams, like you're talking about, like when the second uh, offensive lineman engages with him, his, his it looks like his right foot on a couple of the clips picks up. 
and he loses that anchor a little bit. Um, and I guess skinny does not work with him on that. So I think it's just a couple of technical things, but I just saw Brian brought us tweet out this morning. He said, he's made some plays. He's like, I'm not giving up on the guy because I've seen him make plays. Uh, it's just some technique stuff that they got to work with him on. And I think, uh, from what I've heard, skinny is working with him hard, uh, coaching him hard, which is good. Uh, and that's what he needs. So I'm, I'm still upbeat on Mozzie. Um, I think, again, I think last year, I think last year uh, was kind of a lost year for him, unfortunately. Um, I'm not saying he didn't learn anything, but I think it sort of stunted his growth a little bit. Um, so it's going to be uh, sort of maybe an up and down, but I think overall he's going to make progress. So I just wanted to throw that in there and um, maybe not clarify like you didn't know, but just that's some other stuff that I've been hearing on it and yeah. let you go. All right, Travis. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and you know, everybody's – again, you're conflicting reports too, and it's like who – you know what eyes are you trusting here you know do you trust the guys that kind of know what they're they're looking at and I'll, I'll tell you right now i mean you know watching defensive tackles is is not the easiest position to do you kind of have to know what you're looking for i'm not saying you have to play the position i'm just saying you kind of have to know what you're looking for and, and and with any position you have to know like what's being asked of them and and then in that case uh you know with him you know his, his job is to you know uh, anchor down, like you said, and, 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 and hold down those double teams. And that's not easy to do, especially if Zach Martin is one of those guards, um, you know, that you're, you're going to be moved around. Um, but, but that this is a good competition because not only are we wanting to see what the defensive tackle in this case, Mozzie Smith is doing. We also want to see what the center is doing and who is the center, uh, and Brock Hoffman, or is it Cooper BB or Dakota Shepley or, or whoever. So, um, that's why those drills, are are fun here as, a, as I'm I feel like getting raindrops on me here, uh, which doesn't happen much um, here in, in Oxnard. That's not maybe it's just the tree spitting on me here. All right, Rick in Massachusetts. Rick, Rick, are you there? Don't hear Rick from Massachusetts. Rick. All right, let's move. Let's move on here. The phone line is uh, is open. Uh, both phone lines are open at the moment, uh, unless we're still working on Rick from Massachusetts. Let me know, Chris. No. Huh. Next guy. Let's go, Michael Bowling Green, Kentucky. Michael. How you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I don't hear a lawnmower. You don't hear a lawnmower? I don't hear the mower. Well. Then let's quit talking about it. <laughs> let's move on. All right. All right. I no. got a bunch of questions, but I'm only going to ask you two for you know the benefit of time. Um, first off, I I heard that CD got a offer, and he I guess pretty much immediately got it res, you know res, uh, responded and you know a counter, and that Dak got an offer and has just. Has it responded or anything? Is that is he sending a message? Dak, you talking about is Dak sending a message? Yeah, they said Dak. You know, Dak and CD got yeah. offers a few days ago, and CD immediately responded with a counter and everything. And Dak just, you know, silent. <laughs> Who's here? I mean, what? You, I mean, what's the message that Dak is sending? Sorry, well, I mean, I'm, sorry, know, I'm hey, not. I'm not gonna I, sorry, I didn't respond to my agent who called me because I'm in the middle of meetings till ten o'clock at night, okay. and then I, you know, what I'm saying, I mean, like, uh, yeah, yes, Dak is, Dak is sending a message. He with without a doubt is sending a message. I don't think it's the message you're talking about. I think it's the message of oh. I'm the leader of this team. I'm focused on winning. I'm focused on practice. I'm focused on that right now. We'll get to that when we get to that. But I'm not letting the contract affect what I'm doing because I'm here as the obligation of the starting quarterback of this team. So. That's not a shot at CD. That's what I'm saying. That's the message Dak is sending. Dak and CD are on different levels. So I, that I, makes, I that don't makes fault a lot of CD. Sense. I don't fault CD for what he's doing. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't have any. Thing. I mean, that's what he needs to do. It, he won last year. He came and he, he he played through it. This year, this is the last year of the deal. Let's let's get it locked up before I go out there and, and give it give my all. I don't I don't blame that. Dak's in a different boat, and so. I, I just don't fault what either one of them's doing. I'm not I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying that's what I think the message is. I don't know if it's I didn't respond. That that I don't know who, who his agent what 
other clients he has. I, I'm not really sure. Um, but but, but I, I, it's not as pressing with Dak because they're not missing anything with him. I think they'll get it done. I believe I still believe Dak gets done before CD. That's my – I really believe that. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, CD's not there at camp. I mean, you know, makes a lot of sense. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, but I – The I, other question Go is, ahead. Go ahead, Michael. Yep. Oh, the other quick question, uh, Tyler Guyton and BB. Uh, I've heard stuff about both of them. How, what grade would you put on each of them, how they're doing? Um, yeah, gr- grades are tough, you know. That's why I was terrible in school. Um, I think <laughs> I think Guyton is, you know, the Guyton. The, the, they're both they're both rookies, and Guyton is is thrown in there, and he's starting, and he's looked pretty good so far. Um, BB is is not looked as good. So I, I don't like okay. grades, you know, B, C, oh, whatever. The thing with BB is he's, he's got to do two things at once, okay? Two things. And, and he's got to, got to get the snap, and then he's got to block. And this is foreign to him because he hasn't done it a lot. That shotgun snap has not been his friend just yet. So that's kind of his thing. He's working on it. But you know who else uh, struggled big time with, shot, with shotgun snaps was Tyler Biotish to the point where Andy Dalton actually got him removed from the lineup and they went back to Joe Looney in the middle of that 2020 season because the shotgun snaps just mm. weren't right. When, when everyone was probably saying, why go to the old guy? Why not play the young guy? He needs reps. He needs reps. Yeah, well, Andy Dalton had to take his eyes off the field because the ball was all over the ground. And so that's what, what happened there. But he got better. He got better. Made the Pro Bowl and they got a big deal. Um, that's two references for Biotish in this show. Um, that's my point, though. It's, it's a little bit more of a learning curve because Guyton has played tackle. And this guy's never played center. So Guyton is a little bit ahead. All right? Well, well your answer on the first one, it, it really – shows me that I don't see everything. That's why I ask you the question. I appreciate well, your Well, yeah, uh, and, and I appreciate your, your answer. I, well, I appreciate you. It's just different just different perspectives. Like guys, you know, you're in Kentucky, you're doing you're doing as best you can. You know, we're here we, we should know this, but that's just an opinion. And that some people well, might say Dak is uh, you know, maybe maybe it is a more of a message, but I think the fact that he's here trumps all of it in in my opinion. All right? All right, Michael, have, have a good one. Appreciate that. We're going to take another quick break. I know this is different for us, but we'll, we'll, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be taking these quick breaks on these shows now. So we'll be right back here on Cowboy Storyline. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites in a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. If you can. The Cowboys Storylines. Make sure to get your 2024 Dallas Cowboys Star Magazine training camp preview. Get a copy of that. It's got position analysis, scouting reports, a schedule, poster, articles. All you need, you can get yours training camp preview at your local pro shop or DallasCowboys.com slash the star. Here it is, Dallas Cowboys Star Magazine. Love doing commercials and love doing reads. All right, Brian in Pennsylvania, let's go. Hey, how's it doing, Nick? What's up? I'm good. I'm good, Brian. It's good to hear. Uh, I guess the heat is all the way up here, too, because it's going to be 97 today. All right. All right. Welcome to Mix Shots. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. We talk. Oh, I always joke with Mickey. He talks weather. No, that's good. It's hot. It's hot everywhere, but right here, you guys. This is why we come here. This is why we come here because it's cool and cold and it's hot in the rest of the world. What do you got, Brian? Right. 
I have a question for you. You know, everyone's worried about replacing Sam Williams at defensive end. Uh, since we have all these linebackers with pass rushing ability and like what Micah can do and everything, shouldn't we be more worried about bringing in a viable defensive tackle? We don't have any three technique behind Osa at one technique. We don't know what's going on. I mean, I'm looking at it, and as far as like looking for someone to rush the passer, it's almost like we got plenty of all like options and alternatives. And at defensive tackle, we're we're all just being like, well, I hope this. Mm-hmm. Bridge doesn't break. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I know. I just think we could use the resources and e- at least get somebody in that's a serviceable three technique or, like, move Golson out back to his natural position and bring somebody in the middle because I don't feel like defensive in- third string uh, pass rusher is as pressing a need as shoring up the middle of the line. So uh, I'll get off and uh, okay. hear what you think about that. Thanks, Brian. Um, yes, Cowboys have a couple of roster spots open. Uh, they have not. They have never gone to full 90, which actually they could go to 91 because of Denzel Daxon, uh, who is a defensive tackle and he's a guy that they liked out of Illinois, and he actually gives them a roster exemption because he's in the International Pathway Program that they didn't even know about uh, from uh, the Bahamas. Um, so he's another guy in there, but but yeah, a young rookie. Um, you look at their their guys, Carl Davis, Justin Rogers, Chauncey Golston, along with Mozzie and, and Osa. Um, like I said, they have an open. They have some roster spots open. They may fill one or two today with pass rushers. I think, and it's been talked about. I think that there's some defensive tackles out there, at least one in particular that the Cowboys have interest in. Uh, there's probably mutual interest because he's played uh, with with uh, Zimmer, and I do believe the Cowboys are have their eyes on some players to fill at that position too. So I'm just kind of waiting to. To, to see how far it goes in there, but but no, I don't think this is this is done yet as far as that position um, either. Rick in Massachusetts, are you back? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Rick, how you doing? You there? What's up? Yeah, you're on the air, man. What's what's going on? All right, all right. Can't hear from Rick. Let's let's move on the story. The uh, we got the lines are, are open as well. Let me. I'll go back to um, and I know we're having a little technical issues uh, this morning. Um, I'll kind of go back to that defensive tackle position though. Um, I I just think that it's going to be it, it's a situation where that's that's that affects all of them. That affects the linebackers. Uh, that affects you know Overshawn, Leafile, Damone Clark, those guys in the middle, and so. It, it's it all begins right there. That's why it is so important because I don't think that the corners, the safeties, the linebackers can all do their job if it's not getting held up right in the middle. Because nothing matters if you can't stop the run. We know that we've been uh, we've seen games like that. Buffalo game comes to mind where when teams are running the football on them, there's not much you can really do. So that that right there is is I think the biggest part of it is is figuring out what's going to happen. Uh, at, at the defensive tackle position, that's why it's so important. All right, let's let's try to uh, get, go to Chris in San Angelo, Texas. This is he. Hey, Chris, what's up? Hey, not much. How are you doing, Mister Nick? I'm good, man. Good, good, good. Hey, uh, I just had a couple of things, and then I was going to follow up with a movie quote since uh, okay. I did that to you the last time okay, I okay. called. I hope, um, I hope I've seen it. Yeah, you never know. Hey, I'm going to keep it classic on that. You know, no, no 1997 film noirs that you know mm-hmm. 50 people in the world have seen. So, okay. um, what, what I was going to start with was uh, kind of a follow up to some of the things we've been talking about. You know, they brought in the guys, uh, the pass rushers. My question to you, I guess, would be: Let's say after the dust settles, you know, none of them pan out, and we just go with what we have. Do you think that there's a position group or even one player that might work out to benefit for that extra roster spot for that, for Sam Williams? Yeah. And then, and then my other thing was actually about Brandon Aubrey. You know, uh, I was just wondering how his kicking looks. I know we got the guy with Brandon, but I do also know that uh, – Last year, we found out that Oxnard is not really conducive right. to show out as right. a kicker. So yeah. I was just wondering kind of how he uh, 
if he's just so locked in, he's knocking them through. I think he was seven no of eight deal. in a practice the other day. Seven of eight missed a thirty-four yarder. That's a that's an extra point. So um, right. again, I, I I think you know he had a really good season. We'll see how how he comes back um, this year. He reminds me so much of Dan Bailey in the in the, mm-hmm. the sense of. He, he's not he's not really there's not like a ton of personality that i've seen I, I mean that the media sees i'm not saying he's not but he's locked in all the time very serious about his job and what he's doing and and that keeps him focused and that's all it is with kickers is really between the ears and so i think that he, he he'll be locked in focused and you said it best and this is just not a great place to evaluate kicker, so not worried about right. that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. And what's your last? I think part? this time last year we still didn't uh, yeah. have an answer to that. Right. Oh no, uh, movie quote, my friend. Uh, Here's to swimming with bold-legged women. I don't even know what that is. I don't know what's that from. It's a, it's a movie quote. From where? Let me give you another. I'll give you another hint uh, on the movie. Another one. Okay. We're gonna need a bigger boat. You need a bigger boat. Is that Jaws? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. All well, right. these are all classics in my book. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. That's a classic. Okay. It scared me. I was young. I I, I couldn't watch that. I, that movie scared me. I was I was, I was very young too, but you know we all saw right. it <laughs> later. All right. Thank all you, right. Nick. P- appreciate that. Um, we're going to move on. Of course, the, the first part of that question, I think we we kind of been talked about what, what what they're going to do with roster spots and what they need. Let's go to Dylan in Northport, Florida. Dylan, what's hey, up? Hey, Nick. Hey, man. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Missed the first part of the show. I was busy working. I don't know how dare they have me on calls and stuff while you're on. But um, I, everybody's talking about Mozzie and kind of the D tackles, and I haven't seen anything about Justin Rogers. Is there any news or anything on him? I haven't really – heard much of him either i mean he, he hasn't been a guy that's made big splashes one way or another um again you know pads have been on for like two days and it's just harder with those type of guys so no i haven't haven't heard much from from him just yet it, that doesn't you know the guys that are tweeting the guys that like to throw out stuff like that they haven't really you know mentioned him yet but we get okay. more one-on-one drills and pass rush drills you'll 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 see a little bit more from these guys. Yeah, and I think the uh, preseason will be big for him, too, yeah. um, out there. So, yeah, DT is kind of a hard position anyways to, right. to figure out what's going on in camp. So um, I see Deuce out there at wide receiver. Um, is he? Are they really trying to get him work at wide receiver, or is it more of like uh, swinging out of the backfield so they're working on his route running and hands type situation? I think that's it. I think it's just getting him in space. I think that's it. I mean, that that's not it's not lining up at receiver. It's just, you know, he can't run through the tackles and and, and make a lot of plays. That's just not going to be his thing. One hand from a defensive tackle is going to probably get him down. You got to get him in space, get him in mismatches, make him tough to find for these linebackers and safeties out there, and then that's where he can maybe do some things. So I think his route running is kind of what what matters the most. You know, just out there. In okay. Okay. Cool. Right. Cool. Um, last last question for you, man. Um, this off season's been kind of a bummer, so I don't recall anybody asking you this question. Um, but what was your favorite moment from the 2023 season? From the season. All right. Uh, yeah. Appreciate that. And, and yeah, it's Nick. Yeah, it's it's that was tough. You know, uh, just the way it ended, and so. Um, I had a I had a good time with with forty to nothing. That was pretty cool. I mean, that's the first thing that pops into my mind. There were some, some really cool things that happened throughout the year, some great games. Uh, I don't have the schedule in front of me, so I don't remember as many of them. But, but I just I thought, what a tone setter that was to go into New York. And, I, and you just keep waiting for them to come back and actually, you know, maybe score a point, and they just couldn't and never did. Uh, that was – that was cool. It was indicative, I guess, of the season. The Cowboys, were, you know, were really good that year, and 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 they weren't, um, and the Giants weren't. I, I and also, uh, the Chargers, the Chargers game. That was a good one. Um, personally, you know, just just that's not my favorite team over there uh, at the Chargers, and so to go in there and beat them uh, there in, in a home, basically a home game for the Cowboys. Cause anytime you play the chargers, you're going to be at home. It doesn't matter where it is because their fans are, are, they don't have any. So anyways, so that, that was, that was a good one there. I would say beating the chargers and also, uh, and 
also the Giants. All right, let's go to Dave in Fort Worth. Nick, how you doing, brother? Good, man. How are you? Good, good. I'm going to kind of um, uh, piggyback off of some of that positivity. Yeah, let's uh, go but positive. I'll start it off with a, I'll start off with a little bit of negative, only from a different perspective. So I've been working from home a lot because I've been taking care of my, my young boys. But I came into the office today, and, um, man, there's a lot of talk about Dallas just got worse. You know, I don't even think they're going to win 10 games this year, blah, blah, blah. And I don't, under, I don't really understand that mentality. I don't see where they necessarily got worse. They lost some players, but they gained some, you know, when mm-hmm. Kendricks and Overshone's back and Diggs. I mean, I know I mentioned his ACL the other night or the other day, but if he can come back and, you know, be as good as he was, you know, at the beginning of the first two games of last season, I mean, he's, he's a factor. I mean, he, was, he caused two turnovers in the first game, hitting Barkley and right. then stripping the ball, you know. So uh, I'm very excited. I mean, we, like I said, we lost Armstrong and Fowler and some people. But um, also, the offense didn't even really start, like, as explosive as they finished. You know, C.D. Lamb took off in the second half of the season. So I'm very, very excited uh, to see where, uh, to, you know, I'm just excited for the, for the season period. Like, I, don't, I didn't really like all the, the negative talk. You know, that's why I was glad I wanted to jump on here and yeah. <laughs> put a little positivity because this is going to be great. Also, last time we talked, um, I was, we, you know, we talked about the dumbbell thing, you know, working out and stuff. And I just wanted to say, uh, man, I was listening to – Tyler Smith, uh, his uh, interview after the game one day, they asked him, you know, how he feels different about this season. He said he feels stronger. Mm-hmm. They said, oh, well, you know, what's your max? And he said, we don't really, we don't really max. And he said, uh, we do like 350 on the bench press, five, five sets of five. Some, he said stuff like that, nothing crazy, but, you know. And I was just like, man, these guys are just way different. These guys are just bigger, stronger, faster than anybody, anybody else. So, um, but, yeah, man, I just wanted to throw it out there. I have never done this before, so I want to throw a random wrestler out there for you. Okay. I don't know if you know him. Rikishi. You know Rikishi? Rikishi? Not really. That's not uh, – he's he's really big, though, big and sloppy. Yeah, he used to just rub his butts on people. I don't yeah. know. That was, like, his special move. It was weird. Don't ask me why I chose him. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> what a great way to end the show, just talking about rubbing your butt on someone. That That's awesome. <laughs> That's what the Cowboys are going to do this year. That's what the Cowboys are going to do this that's year. That's what they're, they're, they're going to do. They're going to do like the Rikishi. That's what they did to the Giants in that first game. For <laughs> they sure, sure did. <laughs> and the second one too. Let's not act like they, just because they scored a point doesn't mean it was it was better. All right, all right. Well, thanks for the call. Appreciate that. And okay. and yeah, you're right. Being positive is is the way the way it should be. I mean, there's 32 teams that should be positive about it in, in their own way. Everyone's going to have you know different. Um, you know, expectations and, and, and re- realistic expectations. But, you know, I, I, I'm just not saying because the Cowboys lost the free agents that they lost and, and they lost Sam Williams' injury doesn't mean, like, we're, we're looking at a 5-12 and 12 season here. I mean, there, there are some things that got to get better, though. There's no doubt about it. And I didn't mention this before. But if your quarterback plays games like he practiced yesterday, then you're going to be fine. Because he, that was the best he's been all year, uh, no doubt about it. And the best practice that I've seen him, he's not really been a great practice player in his career. And he, he was certainly cooking yesterday. Uh, he, he was making you know, these receivers. Jalen Brooks was, was looking really good because he had no other choice but to catch the ball on some of these throws from Dak. Dak really was in his zone yesterday. It was fun to watch. Let's we'll see if he does it again today, uh, in the next practice. Today is going to be a little bit more of a lighter practice. But we'll see what happens as we go get a little closer to the weekend. All right. Uh, uh, we had to go a little bit extra today. We got uh, Cowboys break is coming up right now, so stay tuned for that. We will see you on Monday uh, for the next Cowboys storyline. See you then. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!